Jesus on. Hey, you get Jesus on every day. But this is Thursday night, bottom line. It's time to resonate the sound. Welcome all around the world on YouTube and welcome to this station. Encore Boy Chris Hodekin. Oh yeah, if you're on your YouTube soundcast, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and then ring that bell. Ding ding ding. That way you won't miss anything. Woo! And it's always it's always a good feeling whenever Resonate the Sound comes on the air and we get to dish out, dish out positivity directly to you. We get to dish out encouragement directly to you. Oh, yeah. And before we go off the air, I will be talking about uh, this shirt I have on right here. Woo! In fact, this actually plays into the part of tonight's program. You know, we had a, you know, there's a lot of verses in our lives. And I'm not talking about verses as in Bible verses or song verses. And that being V-E-R-S-E-S. -E but a lot of verses in our life. V-E-R-S-U-S. -E or V S. -U -S. Period. Like in sports, you would see if it's throwback basketball, if it's basketball in the 80s, it would if in the 70s and 80s, it would be the Boston Celtics versus the Los Angeles Lakers. In the 90s, it would be the Bulls versus the World. In football, a lot of times it would be the Cowboys versus the Steelers. Uh, this past Super Bowl Sunday, we had the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. If you translation that to the biblical side of things, we normally we had God versus Jacob, the original wrestling match, the, the best wrestling match, the greatest wrestling match of all time. We have merch concerning that deal coming out very, very soon, too. We had David versus Goliath. We had David versus the List Problem. We had Jesus versus his flesh. We had a whole lot of verses in our life. Tonight, we we'll resonate the sound. We're gonna dive really deep into the versus situation. Something a little bit different. In fact, how about we go inside the world infamous resonate church and our senior lead pastor, Brian Adams is standing by. Yeah, a new feel, a new flavor. But tonight's broadcast, we deal with transition Versus change. You're gonna need your notes on this one. In fact, you're gonna need to take notes on this one. And do a little bit more than everything we're gonna have on the screen for you. You're gonna need it. Pastor, 
It's all yours. A new feel, a new direction. Let's go. Let's go resonate. But I want to talk about change this morning, but in fact, I want to try to talk about transition versus change. I want to, I want to mix it up a little bit. I want to talk about trans, transition versus change. And we all know we don't like change, but I kind of want to look at it a little different. So this morning, we're going to be looking at the book of Joshua. We're going to start with verses 1 through 9, but we'll break it down a little different this morning. But we kind of just want you to kind of look at something and think about some things this morning, maybe see where you're struggling. Maybe we could catch one where it's falling a little bit short. Hey, there's nothing wrong with falling short. Come on. Yeah. The Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God. Amen? Yeah. And, you know, that don't mean you just keep doing it on purpose. It means that when you make a hit, go just get up. Yeah. Right. My dad used to tell me something. The only time you're a failure is when you don't get back up. Right. Right. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you funny on that, how he used to do that. My brother used to, he, he used to box. And, and, and there's like a quite a bit of age difference between me and my brother. And my dad and him would box, and he would get beat up by my dad, boxing, playing, teach us how to fight, not on purpose. And then it was like it was revenge on little brother. And, and the gloves wouldn't even fit. And I'd get popped around pretty good, and my dad said, You're going to be if you don't get up. And I'm like, I keep getting up, though. I keep getting knocked back down. And he goes, But sooner or later, you're going to realize he's going to feel about that, too. Yeah. And you're going to catch it, and you're going to realize you're going to have to feel it, right? That took 15 years, but I thought I could figure it out. <laughs> but what I get at is sometimes some of us feel like we're failures because we just, it seems like everything's coming against us, everything keeps happening and happening and happening. And then sometimes, but you know, it's just simple because we're fighting change or we're fighting transition. We don't really want to change or we don't really want to, you know, the transition means something has to die. And we don't really want to kill certain parts of our life, so we just start something new. No, we don't. And that's just hard to do sometimes. So I want to take you on a story for a second so you can kind of catch what I'm talking about, and this is pretty cool. You know, if you were going to a beach somewhere, and if you were able to catch a shellfish, say you took it home, put it in some salt water, or maybe you loaded it up on a plane and you took it across the world, and, and say you took it to San Diego, California, wherever, but maybe Budapest, but you took it somewhere totally different and put it in a totally different water, right? Totally different. Salt water, but totally different. The interesting thing is with that fish, something crazy would happen. Most people don't understand that. In another ocean, when you take that shellfish, right, on the other side of the world, we'll say, when you take that shellfish, that shellfish is still going to open because it's used to its size. Although on the other side, the time of the, 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 time, the time of the tide has changed, that shellfish will still open and according to its own waters. That's crazy. So what that tells us is, you can change the location, but the, tra the shellfish won't transition to something new. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. And what's going on is, God's trying to transition you from one area, but you're still acting like you're in a former area. Right. He's taking you out of the sin and the hard life that you've had, and He's trying to get you to transition to something new, and he's even got some of you there now. You're starting to you're starting to cope more, you're starting to go to church more, you're starting to pray, you're starting to sing. But there's still part of you that still wants to operate like it's in the world. Right. You're just right. like that shellfish. Right. You're in a new spot, but you want to operate the old way. Yeah. That makes sense. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And some of us do that. So you gotta understand, we'll hold, we'll hold to our tie to hold, even though God's trying to put us in something new. Let me break it down this one. God, you come out of the streets, you come out of a rough situation, maybe a bad marriage or whatever you come out of, and God's blessed you, and He's moved you to something new, but your heart still operates in the former. Right. You know there's better things, you know there's good things, you're waiting on God to do something, but you just don't want to do that change. You just you still want to operate that way. You still think you can see the same people that were bad in foot. Come on, somebody. You still go hang around there and do that. And and it'll be okay. I'll change their lives. Come on. I don't know what I'm talking about. When I first got back to church, all my drug habits and everything, I would be like, oh, I can do this. I can hang out with them and I can win them to Christ. But what happened was, God was trying to tell me, you need to transition over here. But my heart keep wanting to go back over there. Although I had good intentions, come on. I didn't want to do the change. That makes sense? 
Huh? So you would think that transition and change would be identical, you know, but they're very, very different. Change is very different than transition. Very right. different. Right. See, change is external, yeah. circumstantial. Right? right? Transition is internal. Amen. Inside. Yep. Totally different. So you look at the book, the book of Joshua. You have a tremendous amount of changes taking place. And I want you to get this before we even start into the word this morning. There's like major, there's this major thing that's taking place. Transition has to happen, change has got to happen, and, and they can run co coherent with one another, but they're totally different. See, in the book of Joshua, you find out all of a sudden now they're changing geographically. They're changing scripturally. They're changing uh, generational. They're changing naturally. And now the Spirit of God is beginning to change on them. It's getting stronger because now you've got people that's hungry for it. There's something going on there. So let's talk about that for a second. And I want to do verses 1 through 6 real quick. But I want you to understand that there's a transition that's going on. But transition don't happen without a death. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, this is verse 1, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of you know, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over Jordan and all the people to the land which I have given thee, the children of Israel. Every place, and, and I like this, this is every place that the sole of your foot would tread upon, I will give in you, as I said unto Moses. Now we know he comes in verse 4, he comes from the wilderness all the way to later on as far as the great river and do all that. But I want, to, I want to build on five, right? And he says, and no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you. It was he won't leave me. He won't forsake me. Come on. And he says, be strong and a good courage for people. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance of the land which I swore unto your fathers. Now I want you to think about this for a second. There's a big change happening, but even better, there's a transition happening. And we find out that the first thing that happens here is, means that with transition means there's termination. Something's got to give. Something's got to change dramatically. So in order, in order to have a meaningful transition... There must be a termination of something in order to start something new. Amen. In other words, something's got to die. Yep. I know some of you are moving up, and I know that we're getting closer, and the church is starting to change, but we had to kill ourselves to start over again. Come on. The church had to rebuild up where we were real heavy with the youth group and everything and being a national champ so many times. Yeah. That was great, but God's like, now I need you to work with the people that no one else wants. That's right. I need you to work with the ones that are the forgotten. So we had to reamp and we had to change, right? And now look at what we're doing. But let's make it personal. So God's trying to move you somewhere, and He said, Hey, I got great things for you. I got a ministry for you. I got a calling for you. I got this for you, and I have this for you. And I promise that no man can stand before you. And I promise for every you pick your foot, something great's going to happen. And I promise you all this stuff, right? But one thing's got to happen you got to die to your old ones. Right. you got to give up the old life. Right. And not only just walk away from it, but there needs to be a termination. In other words, you need to send this to death. You can't say you're going for God and keep going back to the old. Yes, right. true. True. And that's powerful if you think about what he's saying here. He's saying to start something new, something old has to die. Right? Yes. Right? Ain't that why? It reminds me of Brother Cochran, a, a pastor friend of mine from Pocahontas. He hunts in the same, and I've said this story a couple of times, but he hunts in the same spot every year when he goes to elk hunting, and he wasn't paying no attention to what's going up there. He goes to the same spot. He's been doing it for 20 years, and when he gets up there, Jordan, he gets all the way up there to go hunting. He pulls up, and everything's burnt, and everything's gone. And he's like, man, I, I, did, I should have checked. He said, I just assumed it was going to be good like it is every year. I just assumed every tree was still there. It was still beautiful. He said, I assumed everything that I love would be the same. Yes. And he goes, so I walked. He goes, I got there and I decided, well, I'm just going to walk through all the ashes. So he took the trail down to the valley where he always goes, went to sit on the saddle where he hunts. 
And when he gets there, he said, I found the pieces of my tree stand, and I see it laying there. And he goes, so I knew it was my tree. And he goes, and I sat there, and I started pouting, and I started crying. And he's like, Lord, how can you take something I feel so beautiful away from me? How can this just happen? He goes, Lord, everything's just dead. Nothing's going to come of it. And he said he sat there for a while. And just started meditating on God. And he said all of a sudden, he seen something just kind of moving. Just a little bit. Not a lot, just something simple. And when he looked, out of one of the burnt stumps was already about a 13 inch high, green, little live limb. That was starting to grow out of something else. And he said, after I seen that, I thought, oh Lord, you're telling me that sometimes everything has to die for new growth to happen. Oh. Right? So that's what he's saying here. He's like, listen, everything I promised Moses, God said, I'm not going to change my words. I'm not going to say change my promises. And, and what's good about this, you guys got to understand this. What he promised Moses, it's still our promise. Wherever we build our foot, come on, it's going to be our ground. He said he'd never leave us, right? He said he'd never forsake us. We know that. But the problem is we're not willing to let something terminate. And we're not willing to let something die. Right. You can say, you don't understand what I gave up. But have you gave up everything? Right. Have you killed it all? Think about that. See, we all would like to have a new experience, right? We all like to have a new spirit to God. Come on, new spirit, new atmosphere, new love for God. Come on, new fit. Come on, new way everybody looks at one another. We, all, we, we always want something new. But the problem is, if we don't get rid of the old, how can it be new? Right. Right? We all want a new car, but you better get rid of the old one. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Right? See, what I'm getting at is, what the problem is with your life might not be that God ain't hearing you because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. The real problem could be that you're just not terminating all the bad things in your life. That you're leaving some of it still there. That you're still falling back. Hey, I'm being guilty of this. Right? Ain't we all? That there's a moment that we're like, hmm. I just, everything's great, everything's good. But you have a drawing of something. It always has to be a drug. It could be a person. Or it could be an atmosphere. It could be something that you didn't know that you don't need to go there because you can feel it in your heart because the Spirit of Spirit witness, hey, you don't need to go there. And what that's telling you is, hey, that needs to die. We need to move on. Maybe it's a new atmosphere and a new change. I'll give you one on us. Me and me and Carmen, we were doing the ministry and everything was good. And, and then we went to Warner and we, we had to kill everything here. We both had outstanding jobs, good things. I was a associate pastor. Everything was going great and, and, and no reason to move. But God said, you got to go. So we went. But when we got there, we realized something. There was none of our family around. There was none of our, come on, none of our friends. My pastor has been guiding me, taking care of me. He was gone. And I was in a new, strange land all by myself. And Carmen felt the same way. We were like, we don't know nobody. We don't know what's going on. So that first week or two, it was rocky. Hello? I'm starting a new church from scratch. Seems like we do a lot of that. But, but it was just rocky and scary. So we had to realize, all right, Lord, you're telling us to let go of that. Not that that wasn't no good. Not that my time with my former pastor wasn't great. Yes, it taught me a lesson. Yes, it made me the minister that I am today. But there's sometimes you still got to move on, even if it's good, because God's got something that's better than what you know of. Amen. But you've got to go. Yes, amen. You hear me? Yes. So you got to do this. So in other words, you got you to gotta expect changes. Every person will experience change. It'll come. It could be employment. It could be address. A mural status. Come on. Is this going to happen? It will. Can I give you some examples in the Word of God? Elijah and Elisha. Samuel to Saul. Saul to David. Now Moses to Joshua. Every time that God was moving these people to the next level, they had to be something that was terminated to move on. So let me ask you something. Because I know you know it. What's the one thing that's keeping you from moving forward in God? 
Not the one thing that is keeping you where you at, but the one thing that is keeping you from moving forward with God. Now, I know that you got human desires that you want to move forward here, and you're not comfortable here because this is comfortable, and this is what you're used to. Come on, I'm that way. I, I ain't going to lie to you. Now that we're our own organization, now that we're working with Breaking Boss, this ain't comfortable to me, but I know one thing. i got to kill the old for this to become comfortable. Because if I'm trusting the old, I'm trusting that old thing. I'm trusting the human thing. I'm trusting my emotions. I'm trusting my feelings. But i got to get comfortable with what the Spirit of God wants me to do. Amen. And that's the difference. Amen. We're going to see transition. It's going to happen. See, God God has a desire. Everyone say desire. Talk to me this morning. Huh? God has a desire to transition us, in other words, to move us, to transform us, to be more like Him. Yeah. And to be more like Him, that means we have to get away from the old. Yeah. Just got to go. Just got to let it die. It was great. Hello. I'll give you a good example. You want to know them? I can stay in Missouri. I probably done just as good, maybe even better by doing following my dad's ministry, my uncle Lowell's ministry, and everyone else's ministry. And in fact, I had family shame me when I went and started my own. They're like, why don't you come down here and keep this family thing going? I was like, well, first off, it shouldn't be a family thing. It should be a God thing. Yeah. That's right. Right? So I had to step away from what was comfortable, from what was already built up for me, and said, that ain't where God wants me. God's transitioned me to somewhere new. God's letting that die out in my life. Maybe not yours, but in my life, i got to go forward where God wants. And if we wouldn't have went forward, where would you guys be? Right. So you got to think about that. See, you got to understand something. It usually requires letting go. I'm going to 17 different ways for y'all to get this, okay? <laughs> Usually means you gotta let go of something. Right. You gotta let go of it. Because if you're not letting go of it, it's keeping you from wholeheartedly pursuing God. Come on. Come on. Is it anger? Come on. Hello? Come on. Come on. Come on. Is it hurt? Come on. Come on, God, do you want to really want to do I feel it? Is it Facebook? Come on. I mean we post a lot on Facebook. But think about it. If you're really leaving a hurt, you're not letting it go. Hello? My dad used to say, stop rubbing salt in your wounds. You know what I'm talking about? You ever done that? That's not smart. Don't do that. Right? Stop. stop. Just let it heal, Brian. You can't. Uh, my problem used to be, I can't let it go. Right. Hello? And this last transition that we're going through, man, I really didn't want to let some things go. There were some things that happened while we were moving here, some different things, this, that, and that. It's called life. Come on. Yeah. And I had to remind myself, it's just called life. Let it go. Right. And I had to learn this time, don't rub salt. Even if I'm right, don't, don't rub salt. Because it ain't about me being right. It's about me realizing, hey, that ain't for me to stay here and drill on. That's a sign that I need to go and drill on Jesus a little longer. Because if my meditation and my thoughts more on an issue than it is God, that's an issue I don't need to have. Right. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. So the next thing we need to look at is transition means transmission. And this is cool. Verse 7 says, only be strong and courageous. Right? That you may observe to do according to the law which Moses by a servant had commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Everyone say prosper wherever you go. Prosper wherever you go. Let's do this one time. Say wherever you go. Wherever you go. Did you catch that? Wherever you go. Wherever you go. Not where you stay. Come on. That's right. That's you should always be developing and moving in God. The whole church. Yeah. The problem is sometimes we think, oh, I'm here. This is good. And what's wrong with that? Sooner or later, sooner or later, the water gets still. See, the Bible says that out of our belly should flow living water. Water that's flowing. Something that's always got a current. Something that's alive. You ever seen water just sit? Yes, you have. Y'all from Arkansas. You know where the mosquitoes are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? I, I'll tell you what happened the other day. Uh, uh, Jordan came over and he straightened up our yard for me in the back. And, and we had some water and they set it on the porch. And they didn't do nothing wrong. I just didn't know that bucket was out there. And then I went outside and said, because I said, I get up really early and I go out there and I sat in there and I was just kind of meditating, kind of praying, kind of just being me. And I was like, why are there so many mosquitoes? 
And I mean, you can like see the cloud. Like, right? And I was like, where are they coming from? It's daytime. What in the world? And what happened was that had still water in it. Yeah. And he started giving birth to blood suckers. Come on. Yeah. And, they started, and they started flying around me. And they started attacking me. And I'm like, what in the world? And then it reminded it might me of this. It's just like when we stay in one spot too long and we're not trying to progress with God or we're not terminating things in the past, we become stagnant. We become yeah. uh, stale. That makes sense? We become yeah. lifeless. Not only that, we start producing things that kill and do harm instead of something that produces yeah. life. Yeah. We all will say stole and say, it's their fault the way you're doing it. But not realizing you've been there so long, you're the one showing the negativity. Right? Yeah. It's because we get so caught up and we're like, I don't want to do it. I don't want it to die. But you got to let it go. If you don't let it go, it will never work. Hello? It won't work. Now I want to teach something real quick. Verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Right? But you shall, everyone say, meditate. 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 In it day and night. Right? right? Meditate. Now I love this. I want you to get this. We're going to get to something. See, change generally leads, listen to this, if you're just worried about change, change generally leads to confusion, frustration, anxiety. I was waiting on someone to say, yeah, come on. Boom, yeah. boom, because yeah. most of us got some of that, right? Oh, yeah. But see, the born begin believer, us Christians, we're really, you know, I don't like Christians, so let's just talk about us disciples, should never experience confusion because the Bible says that he is not the author of confusion. Yeah. If you're confused why some things ain't got no better, first sign is confused is not a God. Yeah. So that means you're staying there too long when God's trying to kill something. Yeah. You keep trying to bring it back to life. Move on. Go forward. God's got bigger things for you. He's got things that you can't even imagine. A lot that you can't even dream of. He's got an honor. He's got great things for you and your family. Right. If you keep staying in stagnant water, you'll miss what God has for you. Yeah. yeah. You've got to move on. Right? Yeah. This is powerful. So I want, to, I want to do this. I want you to get this. we got to understand the translation of meditate here. Now, in the original text, meditate would mean to growl. Not only does it mean to growl, right? It means to growl like a lion. Not more. Right? Because more can get to where you're condemning. Come on. Or picking fear on people. Come on. Uh, but it said it means literally to growl like a lion. Mm. Right? Come on, like some of our stomachs, right? Now, we're running. Right? right? If you guys, if you ever go to the house, Carmen has a little dog called No Name. It's called Noe. And it, she feels like lately that the other dog is competition on everything. And I got to watch her in the last few days. That dog just even comes close to you, her dog. And I'm like, what do you growl over? And it's just a little bit of food. Like one piece of something. Not big enough to do nothing, right? Yeah. But my dog, right? she won't even be close. She could be at that monitor and no one could be here. But if she sees her move that way while she has that one little piece of food, no me. <laughs> and it looks like And then she takes two seconds. Right? Now I want you to get what this meditation, what this means, this translation means. It means to growl like a lion. In other words, it means we are to engage, come on, and study the Word of God, of God so much that we start to growl when anything comes between us and God. That's good. Yeah. That's we good. Like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> what it means is I'm starting to protect the Word of God. Yeah. Before it even comes against me, I'm already growling at it with the Word. Mm. When temptation comes, listen, when temptation comes, and then for you to entertain, maybe did maybe not then feel bad later about it. It was actually God trying to see if you're going to growl at it or not. When temptation comes, I do know you say it behind Come on. Right? That's what it means. It means to get to the spot in your life that you begin to growl. The problem is, are you ready? Some of us rather really go back to the old and not growl at it because we don't want to change it. We want to be friends with it. We want it to be comfortable again. We don't want to get rid of it because if the church stuff don't work, we can fall back to being another act. Oh, come on. But what the Bible is saying is, when he means meditate, have so much of the word in you that when trouble begins to come, you just... 
Oh. And if it gets closer. And if it gets really closer. Now, I understand there's three different types of dogs. Others don't want to do this. There's the big, mean dogs. Right? But I'm scared of the little chihuahuas. Because the little chihuahua will be like. And you'll say, why do you like that? Because it reminds me of Pentecostal people. Right? So what I'm getting at is it don't matter how big you are in the spirit, how how new you are in church. Come on. If you're a beginner, meaning it don't matter. He's saying if you would just meditate on me enough, then the next time it comes through the door, you just grab. Yeah. In other words, that's it. You should be so strong in the Lord and in the word of God that when the devil walks by, he hears you tell me. I know you're here. So hey mom, I have a problem with your kids. You should be so strong and meditate so up that when your kids come in, it's like, not today, I command you to get off my child in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You work in the workplace, you got that one person messing with you, makes you feel uncomfortable, instead of posting it on Facebook and rapping about it and losing your identity in Christ, won't you just rap about it in the spiritual room? There you go. Hello. Yeah. Look, I'm being serious. You've got a power that you don't realize you have. God didn't save you to make you a weakling. He saved you because you're going to be powerful through Him. Yes. So, through Him. So sometimes you got to allow Him to growl a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. Come on. Let's yeah. growl on. Huh? Transition needs traction. Oh. Right? You got to do it. Listen, I'll tell a funny on me. Uh, back in the back of Pocahontas, it's been it's been a while. And so uh, David me and him was there. They used to have an IGA in and IGA no more. And it was winter time, and they scraped the whole lot, right? And me and him got sent probably on a Sunday dinner to go get something, and we got sent to go pick it up. And David looked at me and he goes, "Run in and get this as we go." I was like, "What?" Well, yeah, Let's not waste the time. Let's run in there and get it. So, man, I get out. The park lot is scraped. Man, I get out. When I turn that corner because I don't want to back door is, it wasn't scraped. And I didn't see it. And I went, and my shoe went inside of the store, but I stayed out. And I hit hard. I hit so hard that David is still laughing. He still, he laughed at me. And making fun of me. And I went to get up. I couldn't get up. And I keep falling. And then when I did get up, I was like, where's my shoe? And then like, your shoe went in the store. And I'm like, what? He goes, your shoe went in the store. And I'm like, that's me. So now I'm walking into the store, right? Now I want you to get this. So you understand where I'm coming from. Sometimes when we lose our traction, we get embarrassed and we feel bad. Right? Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. So I lost my traction. That hurt my pride because I fell in front of David. Right? Yeah. Him laughing at me didn't help my pride. <laughs> <laughs> But when I found out my shoe went in the store, and there's little old ladies looking at me like, what's your shoe doing in the store? Right? Plus I'm wet and all that. I had a moment where I felt prideful. I felt like I was embarrassed. I, I could walk with my head down. I couldn't even pop a joke about it. I couldn't do nothing about it. Because I lost my traction, it brought up more emotions and more feelings and all. You with me? So, most of us are all struggling. Most of us need to be honest this morning. Come on. You guys should have preached online this morning. Listen. I'm just playing. But if you want to know the truth, there's not one of us, even me, that's not struggling. I'm struggling. You want to tell you where I'm struggling at? You want to know where I'm struggling at? i got to start teaching class Monday morning. They're going to say, you love to teach. I love to teach. But there, I'm, I'm going to teach the beginning, the following the beginning steps of who God is, where God came, comes from, and, and all that, and which I know it deep. But if you know me, I, I've been doing this other stuff, like the, the seven spots where the blood is, and I, and I love the Jewish customs, and I love the deep stuff. And for some reason, I'm nervous about teaching the beginnings. Yeah. Oh. I'm not comfortable. Me and Carl talked about that last night. Come on. And she goes, what's wrong with you? I just don't feel comfortable. She goes, well, you mean not comfortable. You break down something, you're so comfortable. I'm just telling you. I'm going back to the beginning. I'm going to explain what God is at this moment. Mm. What I'm, talking about. I'm going to explain about the Trinity. I'm going to explain how it coexists and, and what it's about. And she goes, you know it. I'm like, I don't know it. But I don't teach it. And we don't preach it for y'all. Right? So you know what I feel like? And I got tickled. I was like, what are you laughing at? I was like, oh, I don't know. But I was laughing because 
I thought it slipped. I went, I got so far away from the basics, but I didn't realize I slipped. I should be super comfortable in all of them. Right? I'm telling them, the only pass you ever had, I'm telling you so. Right? I, I should, I, and they that I don't know about, I, I like you know me. When I teach something, I want to teach it. I want to break down the Hebrew. I want to break down, I want to break it down to the original. I, but but I said I wasn't comfortable. I was second guessing. I was like, man, I just don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can make it fun. I don't and I was doing all this stupid stuff because I slipped. And when I was slipping, I started adding, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Or, I don't know if I like this or I'm going to fun. And then the Lord said, well, oh, you're slipping because you keep saying I, I, and I, and I. Wow. Sure, I yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. So what I'm getting at is we all slip. The Bible yeah. calls it we all fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Right. So listen, we all slip. So what I'm getting at is sometimes in the middle of transition, sometimes in the middle of killing something, you're going to fall. You're going to slip. You're going to make a mistake. Yeah. You might even slip and go back for a little bit. But the key is get back up and get your subtraction. Yes. Yes. Hello? It might be a slip. Listen, my addiction problem was slippery. I had a hard time climbing that hill. Yeah. Right? But you know what? That means sometimes I had to get down on my knees and climb that hill. Uh -huh. That means sometimes I was on my face pulling myself up that hill. Because I was determined whatever it took, I wasn't going back to where I come from. I was going to go forward to where God wanted me to go. He was trying to kill that in me, and he was trying to pull me down to death with it. I was like, I'm not letting go. I'm going to climb that mountain again. Come on. Come on. And that's where we can be sometimes. It reminds me of Moses. You remember Moses come down with the original commandments, and uh, he gets all mad. That was, uh, and I'm, I'm in trouble when I eat this. But anyway, and, and he gets all mad, and he breaks the, the tablets, right? Yeah. And then he takes the gold vein, and he grinds it up and makes them drink it like he was better than them. But anyway, that's another sermon. But do you remember what God told me? You want to see the growing of me again? Climb that mountain. Yeah. Climb it again. What? Climb it again. But God, I was good speech you. Yeah, you were just with me, but as soon as you got back down where people were, yeah. see, we're all strong. Come on, we're all strong with God when it's just me and God. Yeah. But when you get around certain people, you forget. Yeah. Oh. When, you, when you get around certain people, your co workers or someone else, you'll start telling them a sad story again. You'll go back to your emotions. You'll go back to how we're doing. You'll go back to what engaging. did. You'll be telling them this and that. And that's what Moses did. He gets down there. Because he took too long. He gets down there and he sees everyone worshiping something else. And what's he do? Goes down the word of God. You guys sometimes go down the word of God and you walk away from it. And then what's Moses do? Oh, I'll make you put it. I'll punish you for it. Who's he to punish us? Right. Right. And he grinds up the calf. Now listen, why are you worried about a calf? If you're going to make a God, why don't you get a calf? Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's a wrap. But a calf. And then he grinds it up and makes him drink it. And God's like, you know what? If you really want to see the real growing of God, not yourself, right. oh. you got to go back up to the mountain. Right? Yeah. Now think about that. That means the first time that Moses was here, right? Yeah. To there, he lost some footage. Yeah. He lost some traction. He had an outstanding moment of God, so much so that it changed his appearance. Remember? Right. God said, I'll put you in the cliff. And I'll put my hand over you. And you can't look at me because it'll kill you. But when I walk by, you can see my hinder part, right? Yeah. So he, he knew about the presence of God. But somewhere from here to down there, he lost traction. Right. He forgot it. He wasn't strong. He didn't have courage. He got afraid. He got dismayed. Well, that sounds just like verse 9. I have not commanded you. Oh, I have not. But be strong of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is what? With you, everywhere of you. Right? But he was saying, hey, you're here with me, God. But somewhere down in the mountain. Ain't it funny, we can't wait to get to the mountaintop. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when we're going back down to the valley, we forget what we got at the mountaintop. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, think about this for a second. Did God not take care of you? Did not God not get you out of that bad relationship? Did God not put this back together? Did God not get you off drugs? Did God not deliver you? Did God not save you? Come on, from yourself. Did God not do all that? So why were you worshiping Him here 
and then all of a sudden lose traction when you got back down to the valley. Oh. Come on. The valley ain't that bad of a spot. Come on. Water runs downhill. Yep. And water always represents spirit. I don't know about you. I don't like a lot of time on the mountain. I like getting back down in the valley sometimes. Come on. Because that's where I really find God. Yeah. Man. Oh, come on. Because when I'm walking back down, I'm thinking, there's a next one to climb. Yeah. Uh, uh. So here he is. Moses gets down and does all this terrible stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And God says, now listen. you got to climb it again. Climb it again. Now think about this for a second. You know how this hardening that had to be? You with me? Come on. Yeah. What do you mean I got to climb it again? God? You chose me. Come on. You gave me the commandments. You gave me everything. You gave, yeah. me, you gave me all 613. They gave me 613. That's why it's so long. So long. 613. You gave it all to me. What do you mean I got to climb again? Don't you call me God that way sometimes? Yeah. Come on. Hey, God, if you want to feel my growth, you got to go. But, but, I can blame it on them for the tablets being broke. Mm hmm. I, it was their fault. No, but they're the ones who dropped them. But they were worse than the cat. It's your fault. You didn't leave them wrong. No. Oh. But, 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 and that's like, if you want my glory, get some traction to get back up here. Yeah, meet me there. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So look at it. Now think about this. I'm going to climb up your new walls here that you just painted. So here he is, he's starting down low, Rock. Right? Yeah. And I don't know about you, do you remember rock climbing? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that when I was younger, I used to do all kinds of stuff. But one time, me and Tyler, a bunch of us all went into uh, high jeans, and they got that rock climbing wall, that paper wall, you know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. They got that, you know, they hook you up to a belt, and you got all this stuff. Now listen, I'm not going to lie. I was with a bunch of young guys, and I'm old nowadays, and I was telling myself, don't let them out climb you. <laughs> I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And Ruben was with us, and y'all know Ruben got a little army experience, and he's like, I just killed up this wall. And he, he's just like he's right on the way, he's a little cocky, but just go right up that so, <laughs> so he put us in this harness. Now, we just come out of the boat, so I'm like, I'm taking the easiest one. <laughs> uh, there you go. So I got, the first, I got my first foot home. And I promise that other one was way over there. Mm. Now think like this for a second. You ready? Mm -hmm. I'm break it down where you get. This is where you are. This is where you are in your life right now. Guys, you be out the slums. Yeah. He's been doing everything we've been talking about. He's trying to get you to kill the dead. Okay? So now I'm going to show you what the dead is. What you got to kill is your past that you've been hanging on to because it's going to keep you from climbing up where God is. Mm. Right? So... This is where I found myself. Now, yeah. I want to tell you I was up about 10 foot, but I was up about 3 foot. Three. Don't laugh at me, the rest of them that much. We're sorry. So I'm here, uh, and I had to. Now, my hips already hurt. Mm. My step is loose. Free. So I'm here. <laughs> wow. Now, I don't, I don't know what makes me think I'm going to be able to step up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to, I'm like, and I'm blind, this is, I'm blind and reaching. Oh. Because if you're going to follow God, you got to reach for things you can't see. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you what I did. I won't tell you what I did first time. I'll tell you what I did the second time. <laughs> second time, I put my foot in the same spot for some reason. Oh. And I was like. Mm. And then I did this. Oh. Oh, come on. And I put my, back, my foot back to where it was the first time. Oh. And then I went to do this. <laughs> and you can see it. So then I done this. Come on. And then the next thing you know, I'm flying like this. 
I made a harness and everyone's laughing at me. Free fall. But they Come on. Climbing either. <laughs> Army boy didn't get no higher than I did. <laughs> but what I do, I look back. Oh. I had more confidence. Yes. And where my foot was first. Oh, come on now. I wasn't able to trust my arm muscles or anything else I had to pull me up. Woo! Now you got T over there. T showing out. T lock. They're halfway up the wall. <laughs> but he got so high, he found a spot and he could hear him. <laughs> and then he fell. Mm. I still think Shane was there. I think everyone was still. And we keep going down. And I sat back, I finally gave up because I hurt myself. <laughs> and I was looking at it, I was like, why ain't we grabbing that one thing? If you could reach this. And what's bad about I listened to tea. And the boys are like, go here, go here, go there, go there. I should be able to reach this. And I can make it rot. But in the heat of the moment, it was where it was at. And you can hear the three guys that put your hands to the left, put your hands to the left, put your hands to the left. No more left. That's it. That's it. And I'm like, I'm spread like a star. Mm. Trust your arm. Arms here in England. Do it. Did you hit your leg there? <laughs> that's not <Well>, search. <laughs> so the reason I'm doing that is I want you to realize that's how life is. Yes. Oh, that's good. If you look back, it will take someone else's to eyes. It's giving you a, you think they have an advantage for it, but they're looking down looking up to you. Oh, so you're right. trusting someone that's looking up to you. Mm. So the one that got you that high. Yes, yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's like, so picture of Moses. You know he was bad. Yeah. Hello. Had a little anger. Oh, oh, when he hit the rocks when he don't have to hit it. Come on. Mm -hmm. So here he is. He's starting the journey. Come on. So you gotta get to the spot that you trust. Him. 
You've got to realize that God took you, we're going back to the shelf, He took you out of that ocean. And He's picked you somewhere where there's more food. He's picked you somewhere where there's more abundant life. And He's saying, stop opening and closing to the old ties. Realize I sent you a new. There you go. I have made you. Yes. There's something great for you. Can we be real honest real quick? Yes. Can we be the super honest and not close? Yes. When you do this, it's going to change your moral directions. Oh. It's going to change. It reminds me of Hebrews 13. I love, I love the book Hebrews. Hebrews 13 says this that brotherly love continue. Okay? When you get to the spot that you're hating haters, you lost your brotherly love. Yes, that's right. Yes. Huh? And it says, this verse 2 says, do not forget, come on, to entertain strangers. Or by so doing, you have a really entertaining angels. Sometimes you need to watch what you're doing because God's seeing how you're going to react, and there's an angel standing there to report. That's good. It's just so. Let me tell you about mine. So I was coming back to Copa Hunts. They were not. You remember that flood they had a couple years ago, four or five years ago? And now they get there, they were, it was so bad that the water went over the bridge and that, that there were between uh, Boxy, or water bridge, and all the and that woman broke off that water bridge, but she died. Well, I was coming through there, the cops were all there, and everything was there. It was raining so hard that I couldn't see in front of me. I mean, I got through there, and, and I, I was praying a little bit, and uh, pouting a little bit, praying a little bit, pouting a little more. Come on, somebody. Oh, no, 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 no. So I was going and I was doing that and I just went through the roadblock. Why? Because they were looking for her. And I mean, when I, mean, I just went through it, it could have been 75 yards. There was someone walking in the corner. Didn't have a pack. Didn't have nothing. And I thought, dude, you need a ride. And then I thought to myself, I can't believe the cops let you get through that roadblock and no one gave you a ride. So I was kind of mad. I was like, what kind of authority are you? You know, you know how you are. Right? Yeah, yeah. That way. So I was like, hey, God, dude, you want to ride? He goes, yeah, I've been waiting on you. I didn't think nothing about that. I'm going to get in, man. He gets in, starts going down the road, and he starts witnessing to me. Come on, man. Let me talk to you. And then he starts telling me, he goes, man, you're, you're, you're struggling in this area. you got to let some things go. You're struggling because you're struggling. And I'm like, dude, dude. How you read my book? I don't know you. I just picked you up in the rainbow, fix it, get you back out in the rain. <laughs> you ever had one of them moments? They tell you how to pick up. And then we got to talk it, and then, man, I mean, it was just, it was, it was just on me. And then, without me realizing it, man, I was like literally back in Jones before I even knew it. And then he goes, man, you drop it off at Huntington. I go, huh, man, you drop no one off at Huntington. You don't do a dirty, you don't know what that means. Yeah. And, and I was like, uh, and we're just going, and we're talking. And all of a sudden he goes, okay, I'm going to stop. And I was like, dude, there's nothing here. And he goes, no, you're all right. And I let him out, and he goes, listen, preacher. And I didn't ever tell him I was a preacher, because I was shocked that he was giving me the sermon. <laughs> and I was like, yes, sir. And he goes, just trust in God, you're going to be fine. Your storm's coming to go. He shut the door. I rode maybe 50 feet. And I'm like, I think it's like he said out here in the street. So I backed up and I looked. He wasn't there. I got out, looked around, wasn't nothing there. And then I heard, whoop, whoop. And I'm like, Pop's here. I'm like, this is good. Pastor Adams is standing in the corner. <laughs> 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 Let's be real. And he goes, what are you doing? I go, I just dropped that guy off. He goes, man, I've been behind you for a little bit. What do you mean? I go, I just pulled over and dropped that guy off. You see him? He goes, I seen you stop. Oh, yeah, I got it. And I back it up and I was like, I should be out the rain. We'll get you back up. He goes, okay. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. Um, yeah. Ah. And he just kept looking. And I was like, oh, right, never mind. I got back in the vehicle and I like, started driving towards the house and he hit me. He's like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That was a message. Oh! I was so caught up. The guy said someone wanted to talk to me in the middle of a storm. 
Oh! Mm. So called up that he made it a witness to be a cop. I'll be having a video that I was talking to nobody. Hey! <laughs> and he wasn't there. And then, and then I was like, oh, I, I, gotta, I gotta get a I gotta change what I'm doing. Oh? Yeah. And then we're trying to get attraction. Right? So listen to this. The first three says this, and we're moving close. It says, remember the prisoners as if the, if the chain with them. In other words, remember those that are chained with them. In other words, when you see someone hurting, remember how bad you were. Yeah. And say, okay, man, we can get out here. Just, you just don't yeah. let that dog go. Let's just go, right? Those who are mistreated, since yourselves are in the body also. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. This is forward. I need you to do this this morning. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bad of But fornicators and adulterers of honor will be civil. Civil. Sometimes we slip over this simple emotions, feelings. Don't make me call it, but it is. Feelings. And we don't think nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? we got to change that. we got to catch that. See, we got to let our conduct, say conduct, conduct. the way we act. Yeah. we got to watch how we act. Yeah. we got to be content. Come on. Yeah. The first class says, be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will what? Never leave you nor forsake you. Now, I want you to look at Hebrews 13 for a second. Number one in verse one, it tells us to love brother. Yeah. Verse 2 tells us to show hospitality. Right? Number 3 tells us to do ministry. Number 4 tells us to start honoring the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Yes. Come on, even if it ain't yours, don't mess someone else's up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Honor. Yes. Right? Check your character. Yes. Mm. All right. And then the next thing, this is where it talks to you. Be content. Be content to move on. Yeah. Be content to let go. Hi everyone, I'm Corbett Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. Want we'll to say a special thank you for reasoning to amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you join us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you join us internationally and globally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you ask it, and you say, corporate, you know, resonate. Now, you guys always bless us, but we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like you ask. We are multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one. Join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location, 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesday nights at 6.30, and we do keep in mind, things scheduled subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little tidly thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR. If you want to resonate, you're giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and secure. Option three, the cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate you're giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail If you want to mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order. Make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. And those other ways you can resonate you give it. And remember, show love, your peace, and say Jesus. Oh, hey, what up, man? What's up, buddy? 
Hey, how are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh my goodness. Woo! Man, I just came out of rest tonight, man. <laughs> you know it's all good, man. Woo! And Sunday, what's talking about it? Hey, why don't you come join us? Sunday, it's 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night's scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30, it's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you! Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love, give peace. Resonate Jesus. Mm. Wow. Even watching here in the monitor, mm, more, more powerful stuff. That's awesome, Pastor. And yeah, you bet I was taking notes on this one. Thank you very much. The verses that we go through in our life, in this case, Majority of it always involved transition versus change. If we're really honest with ourselves, none of us like change. If we're really honest with ourselves, none of us like transitions. If we're wholeheartedly honest about ourselves, no one likes transitions that lead to changes and changes that summons the transitions do you praise God for the change in your life do you got do you praise God for the transitions that he made in your life do you praise God for the transitions that lead to the changes in your life? You know, in order for Jesus to have the life that he had, he had to transition from his flesh to the spirit. He had to transition from Knowing the Torah and knowing the books in school backwards and forwards to be an individual that studied to show himself approved. When you go through your everyday life with God, Change is always necessary. Because one of the key factors in spiritual evolution, and keep in mind we're the only broadcast that actually talks about that, one of the key elements in spiritual evolution is change. Another piece of that change is transition. And a lot of times, you can't have the change without a transition. And sometimes a change without the trans, sometimes if you don't have a change, you cannot lead it to the transition. Trust me, it's not as complicated as we think it is. Let me put this to you as we get ready to go off the air. In order for Resonate to be the change that we need to be today, through our 50 year history, we had to literally go through multiple transitions. 
Last year during our anniversary, our, our four year TV anniversary and our 50 year church anniversary, we showed you a lot of transitions. Three main heat trends that allowed us to land where we are today. It's part of spiritual evolution. A lot of times it really does involve moving a lot, but it involves elevating yourself spiritually to where you're growing every day, you're growing every day. And guess what? Change is scary. And a lot of times transition to that change is even scarier. Because it, because If you really watch what you pray, and you always say, hey, God, God, I want, God, take me somewhere. No, no, God, I want to be the winning vessel, Lord. Wherever you put me, Lord, just bless me there. I, I, I want to do a great work for you. Be careful when you, be careful when you pray about that. Because by you praying that way, and if you truly, truly sold out, God will put you in a place That folks need to hear him the most. They need to hear about him the most. And that needs to see the light the most. And it could be the one place that's the scariest for you. But the word says he'll never ever lead you down a path without pushing all the things out of that path, out of your way. Serving God always involves change and always has transitions. Best part is, it's those transitions that leads to the better change for you to change someone's life. I'll be real, I didn't think we would and a lot of us didn't think that bottom line word would ever, ever get out, you know, ministry-wise. The impact that us doing something new and not doing the traditional church stuff, we didn't even realize that doing something new would end up changing the lives that's change. Case in point, this shirt right here. And I know back on Thanksgiving, we showed you a little preview of what's coming. And this thing, we didn't think that we were gonna be doing a TV commercial concerning this shirt right here. But we had to. Because no one understands the power of words. And we're grown accustomed to using negative words rather than positive words that can change a life. In fact, positive words that can save a life. Here's some advice for you. Be the transition. And let this be a prayer. God, I'm going to I want to be the transition that not only leads to a change, God, you be the transition that leads to the positive change I need in my life. And God, help me to be the transition that leads to the change, the positive change in someone else's life. Because his light, being the transition in your life, can be the change that will resonate positivity, love, and Jesus.
little soul that needs him the most. Let that be your prayer. Have a different mindset this week. It'll benefit you from a spiritual perspective. I guarantee you. God, thank you so much for resonating your sound to us. Thank you and hope for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a lot of resonate service because a lot of resonate service is coming. What's stupid left now? Join us live right here at Resonate Church. Info right there on the screen. Plus, four ways to resonate your worship through the act of giving. Guess what? All of your phone is great. And go to resonatechurchjonesbro.com for the other option. And on pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash Resonate Church Jonesbro. And you're watching this program on the YouTube channel, guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, ding, ding, ding. That way you ain't missing anything. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Dead time. Thank you. To Mallory Chamberlain. And uh, MZ. It's not customs here. Bottom line, one of the official distributors for Resonate the Sound shirts. And yes, you're seeing this shirt right here. In spiritual abortion is one of our brand new shirts. Series one. Here's the thing. What cash up? You can only get the shirt at Resonate Church. Can't get it anywhere else. That's the only place you can get it. In spiritual abortion on front. Oh yeah, look how glorious the back is. Speak life, save a life, plus yours. All in one place you can get it. Rest of the church. And folks, we thank you so much for being here with us. Make sure you're right back here with us next week. Same time, same place, right here on this same station. Join us, will you? For everyone at Rest of the Church and for everyone at City Candy Media Television Partners Group. I'm Chris Heinegan. We say to you, show love, give peace, you know it. Rest of the day, Jesus. We'll see you next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. Ooh, resonate the sound. Join us, will ya? Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.